Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Monroe Walton Center for the Arts Virtual Creative Classroom. I'm Donna Kaufman, and today we are going to start a new mini series on the basics of weaving. So welcome to session one, where we're gonna talk about the tools and supplies that you're gonna need to start this mini series and to start your journey on this very, um, this is a very meditative art form. This is a very ancient art form, actually. This, you know, weaving is probably one of the oldest, weaving and pottery, I think, are probably two of the oldest um, art forms there are. I mean, I guess from the time that people started wearing clothes, people, taught themselves how to weave out of necessity. Um, I think I've always heard that um, necessity is the mother of invention. So I guess that is how weaving, you know, came about. I'm not an art historian, so I'm really not sure, but I'm going to guess this is a, is a really ancient art form. Well, let's talk about some of the supplies that you're going to need to start this um, to start weaving. So naturally you're gonna need a loom, okay? You're gonna need a loom to start out. You can uh, purchase a loom like this. So a loom is really anything that you can weave fibers on, fibers or paper or, you know, whatever you wanna weave, okay? But anything that you can weave your material on. That's what a loom is. So a Standard frame loom has, you know, it has notches at the top and notches at the bottom where you're going to warp your strings. And then you would weave, you know, this way through it. Um, this is just a cheap kid's frame loom, okay? Um, i tell you, um, so I'm just going to show you some different things that we have, um, or that I use, not that we have, that I use. This is a project that I'm working on. My class is during the school year about to start back up again, so I'm trying to work on the weaving projects for the different age groups for, for them. And my children's classes weave on, this is just a plastic hard acetate, um, weaving board. So you see it has the notches up at the top and at the bottom. These notches are about a quarter of an inch apart. Um, and I can sort of, when we go through these sessions, I'm going to sort of break down some different things. Like this would be a four, um, four ends per inch. Um, I will show you how to measure up those things later. That's like that's like more advanced stuff than we need to know for what we're doing for this little, for these little mini sessions. Um, this is just to get your feet wet to see if you even, you know, really enjoy weaving. Um, but this is a great board. I know they've got this board, a few of these boards at the center. I can always order more. If you go and they don't have them, I can order another batch of them for the center. For, um, but these are great boards, okay? These are really good. Um, this one, so these, this one and this one, they're about the same price. I think I probably paid $15 for this one. Actually got it at Walmart. Okay, so this one I ordered online. This loom I really love. There's eight ends per inch on this one, so I can get a really fine, you know, I can get a really fine, um, woven stitch with these. Um, this one is mine. I probably wouldn't teach on this one. I would teach on these larger ones. You know, I teach on these larger ones so that um, you can actually get through a project a lot faster than you can with these small ones. Um, I have this one. This is also um, eight ends per inch. Look how little bitty. Okay, this one has all the strings that end on the front. So, you have to actually tuck those strings. You tuck those ends in when you're done with this. So this is a little bit harder to work on, um, but I still like it. So you can turn anything that you can wrap yarn around, you can pretty much turn into a loom. This 
is a gift card, okay? And so I have, and these are quarter, roughly a quarter of an inch apart. There's eight strings, um, eight warp threads on this one. Um, and I just warp that and it's pretty, you know, it's pretty sturdy enough to do some little, you know, throw this into a bag when you're, you know, out. Like I used to do these when I was, you know, at the ball field. So you could just, and that's how this is made, okay? So this piece right here is made, I hung these on a Christmas tree. Um, this piece is made with this credit card, but it's made with this credit card um, woven sideways so that I have my, I could get a longer piece and I have my ends that I want to fray like this at the bottom instead of at both ends. So again, that's just a, old gift card okay I um, you can take a loom I made this Ooh, that's the thing with weaving your things get all tangled up okay so I made this uh, circular piece on a icing lid and so a true confession is that I keep icing in my refrigerator <laughs> and when I'm having a tough day I've been known to just go into my refrigerator and get a spoonful of icing. So, there you go. That's my secret to making it through tough days sometimes. A little bit of buttercream goes a long way. Um, but you can take these lids and turn these lids. This is the icing lid. This is a, well, it's the cotton candy lid. This is a coffee lid. Um, and all you would do to make this is to cut these notches. Maybe I'll do a little session on how to create these homemade looms like this. Um, this one is one that I purchased. I probably got this at Hobby Lobby. Okay, so it's a little bit easier to use. Um, I don't have a piece. This is the first time, this is my first weaving on this one. Um, but it's But it's turning out really well. So that's that. This one is done on, this is probably done on a yogurt lid. I love weaving in circles. It's a lot of fun. Um, this is a piece, okay, that was woven on this little loom here. Woo, this one, okay. So, um, and that's different. We'll, we'll talk about these later. But this is for once you're really get to know what you're doing and can work really small like this. Um, but this is this is what I love to, again, throw in a bag when I've got to go sit and wait somewhere. I have a real hard time um, not doing something when I'm just sitting. So that's sort of what I do there. But let me show you some of the other things that you might want to have on hand. This, I wove on this, okay? You know, it was fun, it was easy. This worked up really quick. This is a plain tabby weave. Easy, easy. Um, in fact, most all of these um, examples that I've shown you are just straight, plain tabby weaving. Okay, so this one, let me move all this out of the way. This one was created on this loom, okay? And this is created for a little bit of younger kids. Um, it's not complete. I've got a lot of, you know, cleanup work to do. I've got to finish these fray in this yarn down here at the bottom. Um, but this one, you notice how it's got these very organic ends. Okay, so when you weave, if you're trying to, a lot of times, you know, you're trying to weave something that has more of uniform, you know, more uniform selvage edges. Okay, this one, it's a wall hanging. I really like wonky and I really like um, the organic edges that this creates. It makes a very interesting piece to hang on the wall. So with, when you're creating weavings like we're gonna be doing where we're just creating something to hang on the wall, I don't stress so much about the ends and how the ends look. You know what? I don't stress at all, but I'm just saying. I don't, you know, I don't really concern myself with the selvage edges on this type of piece, something that's going to hang on the wall. 
So, um, but this is something that you can do on this bigger board that, like I said, you can get at the center. Um, so, okay. So that's just a little bit about looms and what you can do. You are going to need, um, of course, some tapestry needles. My favorite is this one that has this bent tip, if you can see that. That really helps you to scoop up under the warp threads. Um, this one, now you can get embroidery, I think this is probably an embroidery needle. You can get tapestry needles. Tapestry needles are gonna have a blunt end. This has a sharp end. I just picked this up. Um, and what I've noticed with this one is that if you don't go completely under your string, sometimes you can sort of nick your string and, um, you know, end up going through, um, going through the string and then having to pull it back out because it doesn't work. It doesn't work very well. Here is a, this is a tapestry needle. It has the blunt end and you won't go through and stab your string with this one and, you know, have to go through and pull it back out. So there are those. I also use, um, these are upholstery needles. It's got the sharp end too, so you have to be careful as you're going through. But this lets you go through a lot more strings before you have to come up and then go back in again. So it just, you'll find what you like as you start to weave. But I personally would just start out with just the plain blunt end tapestry needle. Um, it's got the big eye to get different thicknesses of yarn. Like we'll be using thicker yarn for this as opposed to these smaller ones. You've got to use the thinner yarn. Um, so both of these, the embroidery needle and the tapestry needle, they have the bigger eyes. This one has a, it's the eyes not as big, but I've not had a lot of trouble getting like a four ply yarn to go through, which is probably what you're going to use for this. Um, so I hadn't had a whole lot of trouble using the smaller eye. Okay, so you're gonna need your tapestry needles, scissors. Of course, that's like a, you know, that goes unsaid. Um, a ruler, if you end up wanting to keep your edges straight, a ruler always comes in handy. So you're gonna to wanna to use that. Um, I also will use, um, a Sharpie. I don't have one here, but I should have put one up on my table. But I'll use a Sharpie. Um, a lot of times I like to draw on the white of the yarn if I'm using white to kind of show me where I want to stop. You know, a Sharpie is a, hel a helpful tool to have around the art room and using just about anything, really. You're going to want to have some way to hang your piece. You can use a, this is actually a paper straw. Uh, where is my piece here? Here is, this is a black paper straw and I, I just put my hanging thread through the straw and hung it. So that one would actually work for this. And of course a bamboo skewer, a stick. You know, sticks work great for this. You want to kind of find one that's kind of straight so your piece will hang straight, but sticks work just fine. Um, and I believe that is all you're going to need to start weaving. So, go, oh wait, <laughs> yarn, duh. You're going to need yarn. Um, so just go and gather this is these are the colors that I'm gonna use okay I'm gonna use a, a camel color this lovely green this peach I think those three colors I'm gonna use I may throw in a black you know or a yellow you know I don't know I would get three or four at least three yarns that you can um, that we can weave with. I would say for this first weaving, if you're just starting out and we're going to be 
learning some different stitches. I would stick with yarn that's like this. I would probably stay away from this more textured yarn. Um, for this just starting out, I would, I would not get any of the textured yarns. Like there's some great textured yarns out there and I do use them. And the more that you learn about weaving, the more that you will feel comfortable and confident using this type of thing. Um, but just to start out, we're just going to get started. I would say three basic colors. I would also get a, this is cotton. So it's about the same, you know, I think it's the same plies. I think all of these are four ply. These two are a little bit thinner than this one, but that's okay. Um, this is four ply cotton. It's probably peaches and cream or sugar and cream. You can get them at anywhere. Okay. Well, not the grocery store, but you can get them at Walmart, um, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, any of those places. I think it's less than $2, uh, you know, less than $2 a ball of yarn. Um, we're going to use this as our warping thread and it's pretty strong. Okay. Uh, it does a good job for a wall hanging. Um, so I would pick up like a ball of this and three of these you you can um there's red heart there's karen there's lion brand all of those are like at walmart just get one that feels good to you like i would say because you're going to be weaving it with your hands okay so you're going to want it to feel good this is all cotton and it's good. I, I like working with, with all cotton. Um, I had an issue here with this one. My cotton thread, you know, my warp thread showed up through my cotton. And that's okay. That's just how how I wove it. It was a, an, a happy accident. I don't know. I don't know. I like it. But this is all cotton right here. And it feels really good. It's You know, it feels good. So you need to get what feels good to weave with. And, um, and so go out, gather your supplies, and in session two, we'll be going over how to warp your loom uh, and how to start your beginning stitches. So I look forward to seeing you there. Bye.